Scotland, a land full of valleys, waterfalls, and mountains. Different seasons bring different colors and weather. Weather can actually sometimes change within the same day. These majestic mountains bring so much legend and history, along with its breathtaking beauty. It's no wonder it has visitors all year long. And after we share Glencoe, come with us as we explore the charming town of Luss on Loch Lomond. Join us on our last two days of our Scotland adventures. Our second to last day of our Scotland trip will begin at our campsite. After we left the Isle of Skye, we stayed near Glencoe at the Bunry campsite by Loch Lynn. The whole campsite area was very quiet and peaceful, and so after dinner, we went for a little stroll by the water. When today, we all did our part to keep the van clean. The next morning, we headed towards Glencoe. We started our journey from west to east on the A82, going from Glencoe Village to the viewing area at a lock, whose name I will just put here on the screen to not mispronounce it. It was a very overcast, rainy day, a complete opposite of our last visit in 2021, where we had nothing but sunshine. We're waiting for the rain to pass so that Daddy can film. How long have we been waiting, Caleb? I four billion hours. One hour. Come on, Caleb. About one one hour. hour later. We've been waiting about an hour for this later. rain to pass. People come and go, take their pictures and run back in. It's pouring. It's really pretty though, that waterfall. Although the rain did cramp our schedule a little bit and made it more difficult to film with the drone, we have to say the mood made it just more interesting. Glencoe, Glen, meaning valley, is probably Scotland's most famous glen and named after the River Coe, which runs through it. At this first stop at the lock, you can admire a charming white house settled in front of the majestic mountains. With all of the rain that was pouring, waterfalls were everywhere. So as soon as the rain let up, we took the opportunity to record and photograph. Located only 89 miles from Edinburgh and 65 miles from Glasgow, Glencoe can be reached easily by car, bus, or tour company. The A82 takes you there from Glasgow, and there are many stopping points to get out and photograph, as well as just enjoy the stunning scenery. Located in the north of Argyll in the Scottish Highlands, Glencoe is the home of mountaineering and popular with climbers and hill walkers. 
This incredible green valley is filled with wonderful walks and natural beauty that is waiting to be explored. Driving just a bit more ahead, the next stop was the Three Sisters viewpoint. These three mountains are together known as Bidian Nam Bien, the Three Sisters. This is the highest mountain in Argyle County and collectively covers the range of mountains that lie south of Glencoe. The highest summit is within the depths of the mountain range. To simply drive through Glencoe's A82 without stopping would take you about 20 minutes. However, it is doubtful that you won't stop at least once at one of the viewpoints. Glencoe not only showcases breathtaking beauty, but it is also home to one of Scotland's most brutal stories, the Glencoe Massacre. In 1692, around 30 to 40 members of Clan MacDonald of Glencoe were killed by government forces. This all happened due to a delay of the MacDonald clan chief in pledging oath to the new monarch King William and a variety of political factors and motives. So led by Captain Robert Campbell of Glen Lyon and 130 soldiers with him, they took quarters with the MacDonalds who hosted and entertained them for 10 days. In the early hours of the cold morning of February 13th, Campbell fulfilled the orders to kill the MacDonalds he had received the day before. The ones who escaped ended up dying of hunger and exposure to the bitter cold. And ever since then, Glencoe has been known as the Weeping Glen. The next stop at the base of the Three Sisters is the Meeting of the Three Waters. This car park is a little trickier you must be careful when parking and crossing the road to go look at the waterfalls. This spot actually collects water from three different sources and since this day was so rainy, they looked beautiful. And we found out later that these falls were featured in the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail. If one photo of Glencoe comes to mind, it may be of this next wee white house. Its name, here on the screen, can be found at the same spot you would look for Bukwil Etif Moor. This particular car park is not the best, so be careful with your car as there are many huge potholes and loose rocks, especially in rainy days which may make it more difficult to see. From what I read online, this used to be a crofter's house, but today it is owned by the National Trust and Scottish Mountaineering Club, as of 1935. Bourquietive Moor, one of Scotland's most photographed mountains, is known for its iconic shape and prominence in the Glencoe skyline. It rises to over 1,000 meters. And speaking of being the most photographed mountain, this couple was getting some photos taken here, with rain and all. And if you want to extend your road trip, you can take a drive down the Glen Eteve Road. The turning onto Glen Road is signposted on the A82 
and is close to the Glencoe Mountain Resort, east of the River Ateev Bridge. The road offers 12 miles of incredible scenery and the recognizable landscape that played its part in James Bond's Skyfall film. And apparently Ian Fleming, the author of James Bond, had a lodge in this glen at one point. And from incredible mountains to vast moorlands and valleys, there is so much to admire on this drive. As you get closer to the end of the road, you may recognize a scene from James Bond's Skyfall. And if you continue driving a bit more, you will reach Loch Etive at the end of the road. And at this spot, we try to recreate the famous picture from Skyfall. I wanted to share this quick footage because we were in so much awe of the beauty of Loch Lomond, surrounded by so many hills, as well as a perfect rainbow that we saw end to end. As we headed to our next and final campsite with the motorhome, we arrived in Luss, located on the west bank of Loch Lomond. The village is within the Loch Lomond in the Trosachs National Park. We had seen some photos of it online and just had to take a walk through the village because it just looked so charming. Sadly, it was just after 6 p.m. and everything was closed. The town was so quiet, so we just walked around a bit to admire it. We saw several little shops, cafes and restaurants and wished we had arrived sooner. Luz has been named the most beautiful village in Scotland. And in the summer, it sure lives up to it, with the exuberant floral displays everywhere. Occupation of this area dates back to medieval times, however the picturesque village in most of what we see today was created in the 18th and 19th centuries. In 1770, the Luz slate quarries were started and then eventually the thatched cottages were replaced by the charming ones we see right now. The houses in Luss are still roofed in the Luss slate, as they were famed for its quality and shade of dark gray blue. Luss was also used by film and television, most famously in the 1980s series Take the High Road, a Scottish soap opera which was filmed until 2003. The Luz Pier was built in 1845, and it is a popular starting point for boat trips on the loch. The beautiful shoreline in Luz provides a nice area to enjoy a day in Loch Lomond, the Queen of Scottish Lochs, and the largest freshwater lake in mainland Britain. 
Loch Lomond is 24 miles long and 5 miles wide across its widest point. Loch Lomond also has 8 islands, of which 3 are inhabited. These islands are important nature reserves, home to many protected and endangered species. The parish church was built in 1875 by Sir James Calhoun of Luss, in memory of his father, who sadly drowned in Loch Lomond in 1873. We couldn't actually go inside as it was late in the day, but read that there are many beautiful stained glass windows and a fine collection of hatchments, coat of arms. This location is the site where St. Kessog founded the first church in the year 510. Here you will also see the Viking stone from around the year 1200. Also, Robert the Bruce created a sanctuary around the Lust Church in 1315. The church is noted for its online services as well as for holding over 100 weddings per year. And before we headed back to the campsite, we let the kids enjoy the playground a little bit. Our campsite is right over there somewhere behind the trees. Our campsite was actually located just half a mile away, and we could see it from the Lus Pier. If we could walk to it, it would just take us about 8 to 10 minutes or so. And as with every other campsite we stayed at, this one was also very quiet and clean, and we especially enjoyed the views of Loch Lomond. And for dinner, I grilled some steak and sausage, Brazilian style, for a taste of home. If you've watched us this far, we truly thank you, and would be so grateful if you click the thumbs up button, and consider subscribing to see more of our videos. This is the last of our Scotland series, for now at least, so we hope you stay tuned for some different locations of our family's adventures.